Hey, welcome to my first year in review. I'm going to be going over some of my favorite media from the past year, covering a wide range of topics from movies, animation, just about anything that was interesting enough for me to write about when reflecting over the past year. Remember, it's not the best thing that came out, just what I liked the most. Stick around and I'm going to be showing also some of the content that I've got planned for 2024. Let me know what you're excited about in the coming year, if there's anything that I should be checking out as well based off of the list I'm going to be going through. And please be warned, spoilers ahead. Coming in at number one, and full disclaimer, this list is in no particular order, but this movie is definitely coming in at number one regardless. I've said it before, but it's few and far between when a sequel outdoes its predecessor, and it's even rarer when both films redefine their medium and genre. Across the Spider-Verse does the unthinkable in continuing to push our understanding of animation and superhero canon. If you want a more detailed review, definitely check out my Spider-Verse essay, which is out now. I dive into what Spider-Verse is really saying about the hashed out superhero movie and animation industry in general. Highly recommend this movie, if only for seeing Spider-Man yell at a civilian for snitching. Snitch. Forget about Oppenheimer and Barbie. They clone Tyrone is the best film to come out during that frenzied month of Barbenheimer, and possibly this year. From COINTELPRO to Big Hedy Yacoub, just about every black topic and conspiracy was referenced in this wonderful little surprise of a Netflix release. Watergate, calm down, I got the receipts right here. They cloning motherfuckers as we speak in secret laboratories in Chicago, Illinois, uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan. I'm seeing it go under the radar in a lot of lists, but expect an essay on this one in the coming year. So much to explore and break down. I'm excited for a rewatch just thinking about it. Has happened. Hey, gee, this shit fucked up. They out here cloning, nigga. What the fuck going on in this bitch? That's Next on our list was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This latest incarnation of the four turtles is loud, musical, and hilarious. Inspired animation that draws its influence from the Spider-Verse series, the film feels reminiscent of old school Nickelodeon, like a mix of Ah Real Monsters and The Wild Thornberries. Some of the best use of hip-hop I've also seen in film, the movie just oozes style and rhythm. It rolls off the tongue better, yeah. Ooze. Ooze. It's nice, right? It's ooze. ooze. Damn. Ooze. I highly recommend it, if only for the amount of molly whopping that Superfly doles out through the movie. I beat that fool. Damn. I touched that chin. Molly whopping. To an inch of his life. Next, we've got Reservation Dogs, the final season. The ending to FX's miniseries happened this year. From the very first episode, this show blew me away, so to just see it gone after three seasons is bittersweet. I definitely plan on doing an essay of this in the future, but just to reflect on what the show meant to me this year, it was a great reflection on the impermanence of life. As the ragtag group transitions through life's greatest moments, a job in another state, death, familial additions, it reminds us that tradition and tribe are things that can help us weather the storms of change. The show was a reminder for me to lean into those things and make sure I don't take those connections for granted. Highly recommend it, if only for the hardest rap song about greasy fried bread, this side of the reservation. Greasy fried bread, greasy, greasy fried bread. Next up, we've got I'm a Virgo by Boots Riley. Well, I'm a Virgo, and Virgos love adventure. Riley continues to deliver surreal excellence in this latest entry about a giant black boy that's navigating a world that wants to take advantage of him. People are going to try to use you. <laughs> the elephant in the room that everyone's ignoring can no longer be justifiably excused. And everyone's going to have to stare race in the face if they want to get past it. I don't want to spoil the essay on this one yet, but expect a deep dive into the symbolism of this highly conceptual but hard-hitting series. I highly recommend it, if only to dream of what a Big Bang Burger tastes like. Seven Big Bang Burgers, please. You might not be surprised about this one, just when you thought James Gunn couldn't make another movie about flawed fathers, you get the tragic backstory of Rocky Raccoon. For a detailed essay about the work of James Gunn, please check out my essay that dives into his filmmaking philosophy. I love the take of overcoming trauma in this movie, from Drax reclaiming his role as a father, Mantis learning to trust herself and gaining confidence, or Rocket accepting his past so he can let it go. Everyone gets a fitting end in this space opera trilogy and seeing Peter hug his granddad at the end was a great full circle moment to a journey that we started a decade ago. Definitely not showing up in a lot of top 10 lists I think is Creed 3, but I'm a huge fan of anime and I'm a boxing fan as well as martial arts. 
So the combination was a delight to see in this movie. What do you think Michael B. Jordan's favorite anime is? It's a good question. Favorite anime is Neurosis. I think it's still weaker than the first Creed, but it definitely outdid its predecessor in story and production. While it's sad that this movie was probably overshadowed by Jonathan Major's historic bag fumble, I appreciate what it was trying to do to match the fight choreography to some great battle animes as well. Damn! He ain't gonna be in Rush Hour 3. <laughs> <laughs> On the topic of anime, but off the topic of film for a second here, Jujutsu Kaisen has grown to a fan favorite among consumers of shonen. This last arc has surpassed nearly all others that come to mind when considering fight choreography, general animation, story, and whatever other metric you can come up with. I feel bad for the animators who had to miss birthdays, anniversaries, funerals to get this done, but I hope they can find small comfort in the fact that their work is some of the most memorable pieces of television an anime seen in the last decade. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, if only for seeing an idealist crumble into a nihilist in the span of an evening. This one is a little petty, but Marvel crashing. Yeah, you heard it. I'm definitely not a Disney hater. I grew up on Disney movies, but the time for their complacency is hopefully coming to an end. I didn't hate Elemental at all, but the formula is starting to unravel or unmarvel, if you will. With the latest schedule on the Pixar slate looking to be another flurry of sequels, I couldn't be more overjoyed at their stagnation. I'm hoping that they start to pivot in the same way that TMNT and Spider-Verse have done it. I'll never discount Disney backed against the corner, remembering their run during the golden age of animation. I know they have it in them, but I guess it just takes a little bit of financial loss to bring it out. So keep ignoring their sequels and their subpar attempts at cash grabs until they can give us something really worth writing home about. What? And last but not least on my list is probably a surprise, Bloodhounds. I do want to preface, I was not a K-drama enthusiast at the beginning of 2023. It felt like the only socially acceptable K-dramas had to come from director Bong Joon-ho, who surprise again, I have a video essay about. But the minute that I saw boxing in anime-like training sequences, I was hooked. No pun intended. Really straightforward action series with great fight choreography. A henchman named Kong, do I really need to say anymore? It actually got me into the rabbit hole of some other great K-dramas like DP, which critiques the Korean military complex. Let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions for me because I'm just skimming the surface of some great shows it feels like. That's all, folks. As you can see, I've got a lot of interest and I'm always learning, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. I might make it monthly depending on your feedback, so please let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed, check out those essays I mentioned on my channel. My socials are in the comments below and on my channel page, so feel free to take a peek on what else I'm working on in those spaces. Just want to say I appreciate you all who tuned in this year for all my work. Appreciate all the subs, almost at 7,000, so really great to see. I'm just getting started and I'm really excited about all of the work to come, so I'm wishing you all a great and successful new year. And as always, thank you for watching. Maybe we'll have redhead shows, fat booty boy races, baby tossing, something like that. You know, I think of something stupid. Wow.